Okay, fifth graders, we are in chapter three, section two, and uh, this one's about estimating. I don't think this is going to be too long of a lesson, <clears throat> but they do have a couple good, really, actually, I think, really good examples. First one here, it says the store needs at least $15,000 in sales per month to make a profit. If the store is open every day in March um, and the sales average five twenty-five dollars per day, will the store make a profit? And so here's what they did. They use rounding. So five twenty-five, dollars that's pretty close to $500. Uh, 31 is close to 30 so they did 30 times 500 and um, if you guys watch my latest video, <clears throat> you could have done just uh, 3 times 5, which equals 15. But um, there's some zeros we left out. How many zeros did we leave out? And they, they show you right here. 1, 2, 3. So you would just add 3 zeros, and you'd end up with 15,000. And then it says both numbers use, uh, used to estimate were less. This is important. Were less than the actual numbers. So 15,000 is an underestimate. Okay, so whenever you, you estimate and the numbers that you use to estimate are less than the actual numbers, it would be considered an underestimate. That's going to come into play here more in a couple minutes. Um, let's see here. Uh, the convince me a different store needs to make 20,000 in a month. Um, they average 685 a day for a month. <clears throat> James uses rounding and estimation to say 685 is almost 700, okay? Uh, 700 times 30, uh, that's 7 times 3, that's 21. Add three more zeros, it's 21,000. Uh, says, I think uh, it's going to be a close call. What do you think? Um, well, I would definitely agree. Um, I agree. There you go. That's all they're asking. What do you think? I agree. <laughs> that was easy. All right. Next page. Uh, they give us another example. This one's an overestimate. It says estimate 25 and 398. Well, it would make sense to um, up 24 to 25. Actually, I think I might have said 25 times 398. It was 24. So um, if you'd raise it a little bit. Yeah, so 25 and 4 are compatible numbers because their product is easy to compute mentally. Well, yeah, 25 times 4 is 100. And then you could do 25 times 40 and add a zero. That's 1,000. And 25 times 400, add two zeros. That's 10,000. So 10,000 is a good estimate for uh, 24 times 398. Because the 398, they just turned that into 400 eventually. I know they started with four, but they were just showing you how you could add zeros. Um, anyways, and it says both numbers used to estimate were greater, were greater than the actual numbers. So 10,000 is an overestimate, an overestimate. All right, so let's take a look here. Guided practice, number one, um, each egg carton holds one dozen eggs. Michael's chicken farm fills 121 egg cartons. He thinks that there were over 15,000, or I'm sorry, 1,500 eggs. Is he correct? Well, let's, oh, my phone is buzzing. Um, so it's going to be 12 times 121. All right. So how about if we did um, 10 times 120? All right. Well, what's one times twelve? Okay, one times twelve. Well, that's twelve. How many zeros did we leave out? All right, we left out a zero here and a zero here. So we're going to add two zeros. So it's one thousand two hundred. So I think the one thousand five hundred eggs um, is is not correct. And I so said, what are they asking? Is he correct? So I would say no. Um, um, it's too high. Okay. All right. Um, two through five estimate. It says tell if your estimation is an 
overestimate or an underestimate? Um, well, let's do number four together here. So let's call um, 43, let's call that 50 times 100. So we could do five times one, which is five. How many zeros did we leave out? Three, so 5,000. Now, um, it's hard to tell if this is an overestimate or underestimate in number four, because for 43, I went to 50, which is larger than the, the original number. And then I used 100, um, which is less than the original number, which was 108. So I don't think, I, I mean, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell if it was an overestimate or an underestimate. So if both numbers were high or if both numbers were low, then you could. But in the example of number four, I, I don't know. And so uh, if, if you have a case like that, then that's, that's okay. You can, uh, you can do that. I mean, number two, for example, let's look at number two. 29, I could change that into 30 times 688. Let's call it 700. Okay. So that's going to be three. That's a three there. Three times seven, that's 21. How many zeros did we leave out? One, two, three. Add three zeros. So we have what? 21,000. Both numbers were um, were above the original, right? And so that's going to be an overestimate. All right? Of course, they don't give you much room to uh, put that in there. <laughs> Not much room at all. Okay. Um, I think you guys can estimate. So go ahead and do the independent practice. Um, you know, some of these look pretty easy. Look at number 10 here, for example. I would change that to 10 times, uh, how about 800? 1 times 8 is 8. How many zeros did we leave out? 3. 1, 2, 3. 8,000. See how easy that is? All right. Next page. Um, estimate 530 times 375. Um, well, I mean, you guys might est uh, estimate differently than I would. So let's just see what happens. Go ahead and do that on your own. 19, 500 is an underestimate or uh, is 500 an underestimate or overestimate for the product of 12 and 53? Well, 12 and 53, I would change that to 10 and, and 50. So I'll let you figure that one out. Then it says Samuel needs to estimate the product of 23 and 495. I would change that to 20 times 500. Um, Rebecca said that 10 to the third is 30 because 10 plus 10 plus 10 is 30. Do you agree? The answer is no. And you explain why. Because 10 to the third is not 10 plus 10 plus 10. It's what? 10 times 10 times 10. Um, I think that's about it. Happy counts. Yeah, you guys can do the rest of these. All right, that's it. I'll see you guys this morning.